Well, friends, it's Father's Day, and um, I have a talk about a man. It doesn't uh, necessarily, it's not necessarily a Father's Day talk, but it sort of is. We're, we're doing a series about Joshua in the Old Testament and how he led the nation of Israel from lockdown, 40 years of lockdown, slaves, sorry, 40 years of wandering after 470 years of slaves. And Joshua is the guy who takes people out into their freedom. And we just felt, because we knew that uh, step one for the province of Ontario, which happened last weekend, and step two is supposed to be in another two weekends, and literally in the province of Ontario, we're stepping into some of the promises that doctors and politicians have been talking about. And so we felt, well, that would be a good time for us to focus on Joshua. And the key thing that we've talked about the last two weeks is the commandment that was given to him over and over, a military expert. He's like a Navy SEAL six guy. And he's told, be strong and courageous, be bold, be courageous. And so that's our theme this, this month, friends, is how do we step into being bold for the Lord? How do we step into all the promises that God has for us? And today we're going to be talking about Jericho. How do you get a breakthrough? How do you bust walls down that are around you? And friends, I found it fascinating that there's principles for breakthroughs over and over and over in the scriptures, and the same principles are repeated. What we're going to talk about today from Joshua's life of getting a breakthrough, this uh, Jericho, if you go to Jericho, it's uh, maybe, I don't know, 15, 20-minute drive uh, to the east of Jerusalem. You head down towards the, the Jordan River. And if you go there, there's a big sign. You know how it says, welcome to Toronto, uh, prov or sorry, the capital of the province of Ontario. Well, when you get to Jericho, it says the world's oldest city. And it's defended. It has walls. It's relatively impossible to attack. And it's the first city that the Jewish nation is going to be faced with. And Joshua, brand new leader, this is his first obstacle. And so how does he get there? And, and the, friends, the principles we're going to look at are, are just repeated in the New Testament. Almost every story in the life of Jesus where people had breakthroughs follow this very same pattern. And so for those of you at home, those of you in the room, we're going to talk about how do you get your breakthroughs this morning. So here we are. Joshua chapter 5, if you have your Bible. Uh, it's on the screens for those of you in the room as well. Joshua 5, verse 13. Now, when Joshua was near Jericho, he looked up and he saw a man standing in front of him with a drawn sword in his hand. And Joshua went up to him and asked, are you for us or for our enemies? Neither, he replied. But as the commander of the army of Lord, sorry, of the army of the Lord, I have now come. I think for Joshua, that's a whoops. <laughs> he was being brave. Who are you? This guy's got a sword. Are you friend or foe? And this person, who probably is Jesus in the form of an angel, says to him, neither. I'm your boss. And it's like, right. The Bible says this. Uh, whoops. Here we go. And Joshua fell face down to the ground in reverence. And he asked him, what message does my Lord have for his servant? Friends, I find it fascinating that the first thing when he's encountering God is, you have a message for me. Clearly, if you're standing in front of me, you have a message. What is the message? And friends, in just a moment, this is principle number one. Always when we have a problem, look to God. And the commander of the Lord's army replied, take off your sandals for the place where you're standing is holy. And Joshua did so. Chapter six, verse one. Now the gates of Jericho were securely barred because of the Israelites. No one went out and no one came in. And then the Lord said to Joshua, see, I have, com I have delivered Jericho into your hands along with its king and its fighting men. March around the city once with all of the armed men. So it's not women and children. It's just the army that's going to march around. Do this for six days. Whoops, went too fast. Have seven priests carry trumpets of ram's horn. So that's the worship team. Carry trumpets of ram's horns in front of the ark. And on the seventh day, march around the city seven times with the priests blowing the trumpets. 
And when you hear them sound the long blast and the trumpets, then the whole army give a loud shout, and then the walls of the city will collapse, and the army will go in, everyone straight up, or sorry, straight in. Friends, can you imagine the people of Israel had been led by Moses, perhaps the greatest leader ever. Forty years, he's helped them in captivity, wandering around. Every single time Moses said, God spoke to me. And do you remember how God spoke to Moses? Face to face, audibly. The whole of the nation of Israel, it says, when God was talking to Moses, everyone came out of their tent and they looked at the tent of meeting where Moses was. The glory cloud descended over top. Everyone sees this natural or sorry, supernatural phenomena and knows that Moses is having a face-to-face, -face, audible, back and forth like you and me talk with God. And what did the people of Israel do every time Moses came out and said, God just talked to me and here's what we're doing. They grumbled, they complained. 40 years, Moses is talking to God face-to-face -face, audibly and the people are grumbling. And now Joshua has just had the command from an angel, which is probably Jesus. It's his first command, and he's gonna come back to the army. He's gonna come back to the nation of Israel and say, okay guys, I just took a walk, I met an angel, and here's the plan for defeating Jericho. Everyone listening? We're gonna walk around and then come home. We're gonna do that all week. And then on the seventh day, we're gonna go around seven times, blow our trumpets, and that's how we'll win. The audacity <laughs> to say that. And yet, friends, there was something in Joshua that nobody thought he was crazy. Nobody complained. Nobody grumbled. And what is it in Joshua that when he hears this from the Lord, the angel says to him, this is the battle plan. And when he shares it with his military, they go, yes, sir, that's what we're going to do. No grumbling, complaining. Friends, people had begun to realize that Joshua wasn't just the general of the army. He wasn't just one of the original 12 that had been a spy. He wasn't just Moses' aide for 40 years, his right-hand man helping to lead. But people realized that when Joshua was meeting and talking to God, was very different. He's not having audible conversations. He's having the same kind of conversations that you and I have, where it's God thoughts, it's impressions, it's feelings. And so when he comes back and he says, I've met an angel, which was, you know, I've never had one of those conversations yet that I'm aware of. But when he came back, that people go, okay, we're gonna do that. There was something in him the credibility that God had begun to put in him that when he says, this is the battle plan, everyone goes, let's do it. And so the Bible passage picks up in verse 20. I'm jumping ahead. It says, when the trumpet sounded on day seven, the army shouted, and at the sound of the trumpet, the men gave a loud shout, and the walls collapsed. And so everyone charged straight in, and they took the city. And friends, this is just a, an incredible thing. Here is me on one of our trips to Israel, and that mound of dirt is Jericho. If we took our property right here and the National Car Rental, which is next door to us, if we merge that together, that's the size of Jericho. We're not talking the city of Toronto size people. The very first cities were not huge, and that mound is Jericho. Jericho has, has uh, not rebuilt on that site. They built all around it, but they've not rebuilt on that site. You remember there was a curse that whoever tries to build there, their firstborn son will die. And so the people have just honored that and nobody's built there. And friends, this is not a huge, huge city, but it was the big city of that time. It was the superpower, if I could say it like that. It was positioned at a very strategic place it's a valley that goes by Jericho. So all the north-south travel goes by Jericho. They dominated that region. And here is Israel. Here is the nation stepping into the promised land. They've just gone west, crossed over the Jordan River from modern-day um, Jordan. 
They've crossed over. And the first city, which is like five kilometers away from the, uh, from the River Jordan, it's right there. And the Lord does a miracle. And the walls fall down. The nation goes in. The army goes in. They conquer it. And they take this very first, very first city. Friends, here's the principles. When you need a breakthrough, when you need walls to fall down around you, when you need God to do some incredible things in your life, three principles. Number one is look for God to speak to you. Friends, God has the answers. God has answers. And I can just picture, the Bible doesn't specifically say this, but I can just picture that, that Joshua now is the leader. They've just crossed the Jordan River. They've stepped into the land. They're, they're, he's standing on the promises of God that had been prophesied years before. He's standing there, and I believe that what he's doing is he's, he's going for a walk and saying, okay, God, how do we do this? How do we conquer cities? We've never had to do that before, but here we are. We're ready to conquer. How do we do that? I believe that when he was on this walk, he was intentionally looking to have a God conversation. And as it turned out, the angel of the Lord shows up and he has a conversation and he gets the battle plan. Friends, the book of Habakkuk, if you've taken any of our courses on hearing God's voice, we draw on the book of Habakkuk, chapter two, verse one. I will stand at my watch, wherever you are, you just position yourself to say, okay, I'm ready. I will station myself at the ramparts. I will look to see what God will say to me and whatever answer that I'm to give. And friends, this is how we do breakthroughs. We know that God's the one able to give us the battle plan and we look to him. We take time out of our day. We go into a quiet place. We go for a walk, whatever it is we need to do. But we purposely say, God, you have the plan. I need to get the plan. I'm going to meet with you. I'm going to listen to what you're going to say. Number two is faith starts when God starts talking. When God starts to speak to you and to me, the opportunity for a breakthrough is right there. The opportunity for the battle plan has just been given, but it starts by us listening carefully to the word of the Lord, whether it's a thought, whether it's an impression, we can get prophetic words. God speaks to us lots of different ways. But when God speaks, friends, we need to hold those words with reverence. Do you remember the, the angel says to Joshua, you're on holy ground right now. And he took his shoes off. He realized if God's here, this is holy ground. And I want to encourage you, church family, that when God begins to talk to you about your life, about friends, about family, whatever the issues are, you're on holy ground. God's there. God's with you. And we now need to treat those words with deep respect because God has just spoken. And the book of Romans says that faith comes from hearing the message. As soon as we get a God message, now faith can begin. And faith is, we're going to talk about this point number three. Faith is all about breakthroughs. When God speaks, Usually it stirs up hope inside of us. It's like, oh my goodness, oh, oh my goodness, we can do this. I can do this. But until we go the next step, which is point number three of acting, all we've done is hear. All we've done is we've heard a message. But friends, we have to learn to listen. We have to position ourselves. And if you remember in Habakkuk chapter two, the passage says that Habakkuk was instructed, write it down. Write down what I say so that you're gonna get it right. Write down what I say so that you're going to get it accurate and you're going to be able to tell other people. Yep. Number three, do what the Lord says. And friends, this is such a hard thing because often what God asks you to do does not sound easy. It doesn't sound logical. And again, Joshua goes back to the military leaders and he says, okay, guys, I got the plan. We're going to walk around the city and then go home. We're going to do it Tuesday, Wednesday. We're going to do it all this week. And the last time, seven times around, so it's going to take us a little longer. And we're going to have the priests blow the trumpets. And then we're going to shout. And that's it. The walls will fall down. And I can just see some of the guys, you know, the lieutenants, the other generals, they're, they're going, um, um, okay. All right. We're in. 
And that's what they did. And friends, God loves obedience. God loves when we honor what he says and we do it. How many times, friends, did God talk to Noah about building that ark? Once. How long did it take him to build that ark? 120 years. Based on one God thought. One God idea, and it turned out to save him, his wife, three sons, and their wives. Eight people were saved that day because 120 years earlier, someone heard God and had the courage to do what God said. And the Bible says that he was ridiculed for 120 years. 120 years. And friends, this is where breakthroughs come. Every story of Jesus where there's miracles taking place, it's someone heard God and they did what God said. I want to remind you of a story in the, in the scriptures. There's a man who's paralyzed and he has four friends. And the Bible says that these four friends came to him one day with the simple thought, Jesus is in town, let's get him to Jesus. And so they gathered him up and they carried him in a mat towards where Jesus was. Based on a God thought, Jesus is in town, a miracle can happen. And when they get there, you remember the story, it says that the house is full, the streets are full. One, or perhaps all of them, had another God thought. If we can't get in the front door, let's go on the roof. And remember, they all agreed. All four guys somehow find themselves on the roof. They've got the mat, they got this paralyzed guy Somehow got him onto the flat roof because all the houses would be flat. Got him onto this flat roof. They're pulling through the dirt, lifting up the tiles, and they begin to lower him. And friends, the Bible, it's, I love the simplicity of the Bible. It says Jesus, who's in this house, as he's drawn attention to up, everyone's attention's looking up. And it says when Jesus saw their faith, when he saw them acting on a God thought. Jesus knew it's my time to step in. If I can quote one of the rappers, it's hammer time. And Jesus knew when other people are acting on God thoughts and they need me to be part of the solution, I'm in. I'm in. And Jesus took over. And an incredible miracle happened that day. All Jesus did was forgive the guy of his sins. We don't even know what those were. But he said, you're forgiven. A simple little you're forgiven. And, and he's standing up, he's jumping, and the whole house has nothing that they can do but go, oh my goodness, God was with us today. Friends, almost every single story. I'm thinking of a guy named Jairus in the scriptures. He's the chairman of the board of the synagogue in Capernaum. He's probably one of the wealthy guys because that's how you got that job. And he has a 12-year-old daughter who's dying. And his God thought is, Jesus is in that boat coming back home. And the Bible says he humbled himself. He ran down the cliff, down to the, to the lake, the Sea of Galilee. He got on his knees. He humbled himself. And he said his God thought. Here was his God thought. If you touch my little girl, she'll live. That's his God thought. He's asking, he is acting on his God thought, and now he's needing God, he's needing Jesus to partner him. Friends, remember the story I told you about that Buddhist man at the very beginning? Jairus doesn't even go to his rabbi. He doesn't go to the very guy that he hired to be the rabbi for the synagogue. He knows when I need a miracle, I find Jesus. And he goes to Jesus, and when Jesus hears his story, he goes, I'm in. And the two of them walk back. And you remember another lady has a God thought, her God thought after 12 years of bleeding, having her menstrual cycle nonstop for 12 years, her thought is, if you touch the hem of his garment, you'll be healed. Friends, God spoke to these people and they did what God said. And as this lady touches Jesus, she's healed. As this man Jairus takes Jesus back to his house, a resurrection takes place. Better than a healing, a resurrection. In fact, the very first resurrection recorded of Jesus. 
This Jewish man got it because he believed what God spoke to him. He did what God spoke and he went down to the shore as Jesus comes in and says, you have to come to my house. My little girl's dying. You have to put your hand on her. And so what does Jesus do when he gets to the house? The very thing that Jairus asked for. He put his hand on that little girl, 12-year-old girl, who's freshly dead, if I can say it like that. And he says two words, Talitha Kumi. Little girl, wake up. And she's awake. Friends, this is how breakthroughs happen over and over in the scriptures. We push into God. Here's the summary. We push into God and say, God, you need to talk to me. Number two, we listen carefully to what God says to us. We write it down. We record it. We share it with another person for confirmation. Remember, the Bible says for directional words, like you're supposed to move to Australia. This is, supposed to, this is who you're supposed to marry. Those things, you get two or three other people to confirm it. Don't you tell them, I think God said I'm supposed to marry this person. No, no, no. Say, God just spoke to me. Who am I supposed to marry? Have them begin to confirm that rather than you go, see that good looking guy over there? That's the guy. Of course, every girlfriend's going to go, oh, okay. That's not how we do it. We're looking for God to speak. And number three, we do exactly what he says. Amen? Friends, if those of you in the, in the room, I'd like you to stand up. Those of you at home, I'd like you to stand up. And we're going to pray together. And in just a moment, friends, can I just encourage you, stick around uh, after a short prayer that we're going to pray. We have a very important announcement to share with you today. And then after that announcement, for those of you watching, we'll open up the prayer rooms and we'll tell you about how to do that. Church family, those in the room, uh, after we have the announcement, we'll have an opportunity to pray for you a little bit more. So how about you just think of a problem. Have you got a problem to think about an area where you need to break through? For you personally, maybe it's for a family member. God, we need you to speak need you to speak. If it's a health issue, it's a finance issue, we need you to speak. God, we're, we're, we're going to this week intentionally push into you and say, God, I'm here. Talk to me. We phone up a prophetic friend and say, friend, can't tell you what's going on, but can you pray for me? See if in the flow, God has a prophetic word for me. I need some direction. We push into God. And number two, when God begins to speak, we value what God says. We don't rationalize it away and say, well, that couldn't be it. I don't think that's right. When God speaks, we, we treat it as we're in holy ground. The God of this universe has just given me an answer. I will treat it with respect and honor. God has talked to me. I asked him to talk to me, and now he's talked to me. And number three, Father, I'm blessing every single person to have the courage to begin to do the very things that God says. And Father, we know that hope is when you speak to us and we, we go, oh my goodness, it's possible. But the breakthroughs only happen when we act on revelation when we do what you tell us to do. And so, Father, we're coming to you as individuals, as a community, on behalf of our family, our friends, our neighbors, on behalf of our city, on behalf of our nation. Father, we're saying, speak to us, speak to us clearly, and give us the courage, like Joshua had, to get a breakthrough. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.